Hey everyone, it's Lisa here from Primitive Gatherings and we are live today in our new studio. So hopefully this will all go well and you can hear me good. So while you're all jumping on, say hi. I'm gonna go through a couple things for the shop first and then I'm gonna give you a quick little tutorial on a fun, simple Christmas project that um, I have for you that you can either make for this year yet or save it for next year and work on a bunch of them for whoever you give simple gifts to. All right, so I have a couple announcements here. Let's do those first. Um, first thing, let's just talk about the, the fun little gifts we have. We are celebrating Urban Patchwork Gatherings 2. This fabric has landed. We got all the bolts now. Remember, we got the pre-cuts a while ago. And this was supposed to come in April, and we just got this fabric now. So to celebrate, we are offering one of our books as a giveaway today, and then a charm pack. And you can see how yummy the grays and the creams are. So we have that. And then we have two fun, cute, buttermilk basin kits that we're gonna give away as well for Christmas. So you can comment and that's how you're gonna win those prizes throughout our little live today. All right, so we have everybody here, right? Carrie's here, Jess is here, the girls are here. All right, so how are we doing? Are people saying hi or are we? Okay, and remember, Ask us some questions. That's what makes this a lot more fun is if you participate in this live event. Okay, so we still have a couple spots for next week, weeks long, naughty or nice Christmas event. And guess what? I'm gonna show you the projects that we're gonna do. So over here, if you wanna just pan over, we have the gingham quilt we are going to make the lap size gingham quilt at the week-long retreat and then we're going to do that merry pillow and then the santa hats i can't remember what we named that i think it's called let's believe santa something hats. what was it santa hats. the santa hats but we, we named it something else oh. terry did so um yeah the little Santa hats on the little stand there. So those are our three projects that we're gonna do next week. And also, I'm just gonna show you, I have, we ha you can take your pick of the gingham project. So we have gray, green, black, and red. So those are all your choices next week if you join us for that week-long event. So if you need any of the details about that event, you can call our retreat house person jenny she will take care of that kind of last minute thing i know but you know what you deserve it just get away and jump start your holiday uh doing some fun things all right now 12 days of christmas so every year at the end of the year i do this thing called like needful things and this year i'm going to change it to a few of my favorite things so i'm going to group a bunch of favorite things together each day for the 12 days of christmas so mark your calendar for december 13th that's when that starts and it goes all the way till christmas and we will be doing featuring projects and then we'll be giving away some of those projects or products and projects throughout the whole um, event and we pick them all at the end. So we want you to keep commenting, whether it's on YouTube in the comment section or it's on my blog as well. Those are the two places that we are gonna pick the winners from. So mark that on your calendar and don't forget about that. And everything will be either at a deal or a discount or a, a grouping of things to make it um, fun, but that's kind of like our year end sale. So don't think you're going to get any of that stuff for Christmas, though. <laughs> All right. We all know there's a deadline for when things need to be in the mail and properly shipped to guarantee. I, I, I don't even want to say guaranteed Christmas shipping because that's not a gimme anymore. But we're all big girls, right? If we don't get our present on Christmas Day, we we will live, right? And we'll we will enjoy it whenever we get it. So speaking of shipping, we are busy, busy, busy shipping out all of our primitive Christmas packages. And please be patient. Remember, we are a quilt company. We are not a, you know, set up to do this large distribution. And we 
don't get me wrong though, we appreciate all the orders we got. It's good problems, but we, we need to ask you guys to be patient in getting your orders. You know, people will place an order and a day later they want to know how come it's not shipped. Well, because you're not the only order that we have. There are, you know, I think Carrie said we have 4,000 packages just to ship out in two or three weeks time. So that's a lot. And it's not like we can hire a whole bunch of people to do this. The people that we have need to do it because they know what they're doing. And we don't want any of those messes. So bear with us and we will get them out to you as soon as possible. Our holiday box, that will go out next week. Mm -hmm next week. This week is the uh, November box, right? Yes. We had a little delay on that with Thanksgiving and all that, but that's going out right now as we speak. I see them going round and round and round down there. So there's some really cool things in there that you will love. All right, let's pick a winner for one of the kits here. So this cool little kit called, and to all a good night, it's Santa waving to everybody. All right, Jessica, who is our first winner? Uh, Leah Henthorn, you are the winner of that little Santa kit. Thank you for coming out today for our live. We appreciate it. Now I just got to go over this one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Do I miss anything, girls? On the back. Oh, on the back. See? Yeah. Over. Right I missed over. that. Yeah. Right Okay. So with the holiday box, we still have a few openings, so go oh. to the website, and we've got a few left. Okay. So, so All right. You so can snap up. Yeah. So the holiday box that's going out next week because we have to get it. We're trying to get it out before the twelfth, so we guarantee that you get it for Christmas, or like try to guarantee. You know what the post office tells us is what they guarantee, but we do have a few openings in that, and a lot of times. After it ships out and you see everybody talking about it, then we get a like this plethora of people wanting wanting the box. And then we, we up the price a little bit. So I can tell you right now, I just created two projects for it and I blew the budget. All right. <laughs> I blew the budget. Okay. So we had to do some rearranging because I put two really nice big wool projects in there that you are going to absolutely love. So I'm just saying, that's all I can tell you right now. So the holiday box is not holiday stuff. It's like everyday stuff. It's like you ordering a present for yourself. So, or somebody else can order it for you, that type of thing. So it's a gift not Christmas stuff. We don't want to ship Christmas stuff. Remember, we do that in J July. When we do Christmas in July box, that's so we can ship you some Christmas stuff, and then you have these months to work on it up until Christmas. And then, uh, I already said Farmhouse 2 is in, but we have a sit and stitch pretty much two times a month at the gathering, and it's so fun. We really love that event. It's $25 and includes lunch and you come and you stitch with us from 9 in the morning to 4 p.m. and then we just hang out we have fun and like the girls make a fabulous lunch for you so it's well worth that $25 don't you uh, worry about that and then we also have a quick little event that we kind of snuck in here and we don't want to cancel it we have some people in it already but we would just like at least one or two more people uh, it's called Sip, Sew, Shop, and Stay. So it's a one-night stay at the gathering where you are going to um, do fondue. Or you're going to bring your own wine, and we're going to taste everybody's wine. And we're, we have this little cup for you so you can be drinking your wine while you're shopping. We're going to have later hours at the store. We're going to do a swag bag, and then we're going to give you Saturday brunch as well. So I think that is about $175, includes the stay, and I think we might do an ornament or, or something like that as well if you don't have enough to work on. So if you... Um, are looking for a gift, like maybe uh, your kids don't know what to buy you, maybe you could say, hey, I would really like to go to this little event here, and that could be your Christmas present. So sometimes it's all about dropping the right hints for things that you really want. All right, so Jessica, can I have another winner, please, of Coco, Santa Coco mug ornament. Cute, cute, cute. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. And the winner of this one is Cheryl Crawley. This is your kit. And remember, you need to email us your address, winners, at store at primitivegatherings.us. I'm sure Kaylee's got that all figured out as well. 
It's Cheryl Cawley. Cawley. Did I say Crawley? You did. I've been watching Dalton Abbey. <laughs> no lie. You know? Mrs. Crawley, right? Come on. I just watched it. It was fun. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's it for my announcements. And now we can get on with a little tutorial on this project right here. So this is gonna be free on my blog. It's just a quick, easy pillow for you to do. And we do have kits for this on our website and I will link that in the blog post as well. You would just download this right on my blog, lisabonjean.com, and it'll be there for you to have and like I said, it makes a great little accent on your bed or the couch or chair. And you don't have to make it this long. You can shorten it up a little bit. You can do whatever you want. But we do have some kits for you if you want to make that. And maybe you make it for next year. No pressure, right? No pressure. Let's start already on next year's projects. But I am going to try to sneak in another little free one because... This one has been on my blog for a while, and I know my loyal followers, you probably already have done this one, but we have tons of new people here. So I want them to know that that's on my blog as a free download for them. And we're gonna do a little tutorial on it, so it'll be super fast, easy, because I'm gonna walk you through it. All right, anything else before I begin the tutorial? No? Okay, let's do it then. Now we should have like, this is my area, right? Yep. And then, all right. So one of the things that uh, the pillow is, it's a, a yard of flannel. So what I did was I previously took and measured out 20 inches or 21, something like that. I did a little snip. So I'm going to rip. Just, you know, cover your ears if this is going to be loud. <laughs> All right, because this is the back of my pillow. I'll put that over there if you want to just fold that up for me because I am going to use that. I'm going to put the zipper. I'm going to show you how to do the zipper as well. All right, so I got my background ready. So that's my one yard of red, beautiful flannel. I'm going to need a zipper because I like to put zippers in my pillow because I like to use the pillow form over and over again. And this is a nice, long zipper it's 24 inches and the zipper is going to go this way on the um pillow so what just happened girls our cameras are shutting off <laughs> you want to go on an intermission too? okay so let me just take a quick break here while we change the battery or something in one of these cameras and we'll be right back Okay, we're back. That was an easy fix. I guess we have old cams. We need to update a little bit. So they like to shut off if they're not being used, probably to conserve a little bit. All right, so just back up. I've got my one yard uh, flannel for the front of my pillow and the back. I got a zipper to put in. I got a marking pen. I have some pearl cotton. You can either use eight weight or 12 weight. So 24 or 22 needle depending on which one you're using and I do want to talk about fusible web I am using the heat and bond feather light. This is the one I really recommend using I, I don't like it when we have to turn away some quilts from being quilted because they're so stiff or they got the the steam seam 2 in them that really gunks up the needles on the long arms so you will have no problem with this feather light at all so I just wanted to show you uh, and this will probably be one on, on one of our um, 12 days of Christmas too. So here's our pattern that you'll be able to print out on the blog. So I have that here. Here is the fusible that I started tracing. So I didn't want to make it so painful that, you know, to watch me trace all of this at one time. And then I need the piece of natural wool, but mine has a little model in it. And guess what? That's okay. All right. It doesn't have to be plain cream like the sample wherever that went okay all right so just to give you 
a quick little demo on how I trace. I just flow really nice. And don't worry if you wiggle a little bit because you can always straighten it out with your scissors. Look ahead of where you're tracing and that helps you run a smoother line. All right, trace ho 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 three times if that's what you want to do or maybe you just want to ho ho, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna move that over there. Now I have a little rotary cutter here that I am going to use to quickly trim away my excess fusible web. So I know we all bought that cute little rotary cutter. Take that away, please. And you don't know what to use it for. It sits in your container. Well, use it to cut your fusible web. So see how easy and fast that is? All right, a couple more of those. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to lay out my wool on my pressing mat. I'm going to give it a quick little press. And then I'm going to lay this out on here. I'm going to move it towards you a little bit. Toward you? Mm -hmm. That way? There you go. Right there. Okay. All right. You don't need any steam when we do the paper. But with this fusible web, I find that you really need to heat it well. So don't do that like two seconds with the iron. This one really needs to be... have a lot of, lot of heat on it. All right, so now we got that done. And if you haven't seen this yet, this is super cool. This is my new primitive gathering scissors. The Dovo company is out of business now, so we have created this new scissors to replace those. So I'm gonna quickly cut out one of these for you. Set that aside just to save time. All right, now when you cut out fusible web, one, did you notice that it was reversed because you need reverse shapes? I cut away the line when I cut out because wool is thicker on the other side. And then when you add thread to it, that helps thicken it up as well. So I like to cut my shapes a little bit skinnier than what I want them to end up because once the thread is on, then they thicken up a little bit. So I hope that makes sense. All right, so while I'm cutting out and just kind of just watch, Jess, we got another winner for the book. You bet. Yes, we do. Mary Jo Sanchez. Mary Jo Sanchez, you won the book. Thank you for joining us today. It's funny because like, you know, now that I'm here a lot and people come to, into the store, they're like, oh, I feel like I know you. And I'm like, yeah, you do know me, right? <laughs> We're buds. I had a question on your scissors again, Lisa. What, what are they? What are you using? Oh, it's, it's, it's a scissors that we put out. So I use this for cutting all my fusible web, pretty much everything. It's a five inch, so it's the perfect size for handling everything. And it's got really super sharp blades on it. And it is only $34.99 where the Dovos were over $50. So we were able to make the scissors at a much more reasonable price. And they are on the website. And they are on the website as well. So we will have Kaylee link them in the items in the description too. So I see you're cutting literally on the line itself. You're I'm actually cutting it away. Cutting it away? Yeah, so, so you, you see, see the line. Right, so it's you don't see it on what I'm cutting, but it's left on the paper. The paper. So we we want to cut it away as much as possible. Try to stay in the middle of your mat. <laughs> Remember, this is all new to us being in this room, so we gotta I got to get used to it. That's really cool, though. I mean, I like how we've got it set Does up it look here. good? It looks really good. Okay. So I gave you a couple hints too on my blog post today. I that didn't. I didn't. 
post it yet. I will post it shortly after this video. But kind of like a little timeline of what to start getting ready for, for getting ready for Christmas. I like it when, you know, somebody says, oh, do this and do this and it's time to do that. I like that. So I kind of did that myself for you, kind of to get ready. And then maybe I'll do that once a week until Christmas comes. All right, so that's the outside. So I just pierce in there. And when you see this scissors, see how one blade is super sharp and the other one has the curve? So the curve goes up top. And then another little hint is when you cut, try not to put your scissors way in here. Kind of hang on to more of them with your fingertips, the ends, and then you have a lot more control than if you slide them too far down your hand. I was cutting something the other day with not these scissors and I'm like, Amy, find my scissors. I can't do this. I would say too, like if they're used to Dobo, they're very comparable. Oh yeah, they're, they they're almost feel. an exact replica. Yeah. Yeah, so very, very, very close. I mean, you're right-handed, so left-handed people, it's perfect for them too. Yeah, it's, it doesn't, yeah. you don't get a right or a left. It's, uh, Amy is my left-handed assistant and she uses the left-handed one or the right-handed one for it as well she we did order a left-handed one and she couldn't make it work so all right so let's put this away over here this is my pillow front i'm going to move this over a little bit just this down can i move this a little bit you can, yeah if you want well maybe i'm going to move this okay can i just move this there we go I always like put the salvage near me. I don't know why. And remember, I'm going to add the other two later. But for now, I'm just going to pull off these first ones. Now, I use this really nice Martelli tweezers for picking up my shapes. And especially the little ones, all those little berries and stuff like that. And it's so sharp that all you have to do is touch it. So, and then... It helps me peel the paper off the back too. All right, so there's the O and the H. Now I have to look at my picture. You know, I have to make sure I got this right. Don't put the H upside down or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna go and remember, don't put it too far down on your pillow because the pillow has a bend to it, and you don't want, you want to still see your ho ho ho. You don't want it half underneath so I'm just going to put these they kind of nest inside one and see how I got a little bit of a jag in there if you don't like that you can always find your scissors and redo it where do I do it okay. all right even though that was probably in the pattern but there that looks better under pressure in the camera all right so I wouldn't press at home until I had all of them on but remember we're doing things fast today all right, so this is a steam station, the Rowenta. See all those little micro holes? That's what you want for wool. Instead of just having the big holes, you want them evenly spread out. And then this iron has a trigger that you press for steam. So you always want to up and down on wool and never keep it in one spot very long. This, this always has to be moving never hold it in one spot too long and that's it so now we're all ready to stitch so i'm gonna grab my little ball is it right here okay and then some thread and i'll show you how to start and how to stop but that's it i'm not gonna like sew the whole thing because you don't have that much time do you you got it's christmas time you got stuff to do all right so can you come in really close here to watch this? Here's a quick little way to thread your yeah. needle. Yeah. I'll try to bend it this way a little bit. Yeah. All right, ready? Okay, go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna take the eye of the needle and I'm gonna place it directly center on the thread. 
and I'm placing it kind of on the hard part of my finger, not the squishy padded part. And I'm just gonna press down on the needle, let go of everything else but the needle holding the thread. And I'm just gonna roll my finger back and the thread pops in and then I can just pull it through with my finger. And it, of course, you know, it doesn't pop the best through there, but that's how you do that, okay? Should I do it again? Mm -hmm. So directly on dead center of it, push down and move your finger away. And the thread has nowhere to go but in the hole. And then we need to put a knot on the end. So I say, cross the thread over the needle and pray it works. So you just lay it on there, lay your thumb on there, and I'm gonna go behind, one, two, three. So this is my knot right here. I hang onto that gently, secure my eye, and pull it all the way through. So that's a quilter's knot if you don't know that yet. Okay, so now I'm going to, is this good? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna start right in the middle on the top of the wool shape in the background. So that's where I am. And I'm gonna come up, pull my thread back, and I'm just gonna take a few stitches and I just want you to watch what I do and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Which stitch is this? Huh? Which stitch are you doing? I am doing a blanket stitch. And I'm holding it so far away from me that it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is what's happening. So this thumb is keeping the tension on my sewing. Just like your sewing machine has tension, so should your hand sewing. So I always have tension on that thread. And because I swing it to the left counterclockwise, the thread is always behind the needle and that's what completes the stitch. Now the most important thing that you do is this, is what direction am I pulling my thread? I'm not pulling my thread here. I'm pulling my thread here. So my stitch is on the side, it's on the edge and it stays there because I put the tension on and then I swing it around. It does not land up on top of the shape, it's secured down on the edge. So that's why some of your thread will roll up on points and corners is because you might not be getting it on that edge. So uh, I really should do a point for you too, but let's do an end so you can see how to end. All right, so now I complete that stitch. I go forward, but right next to my last stitch and I swing to the back and here's where I would tie off. So take a little bite of the background, make a loop, go through that loop once, go through twice and then pull it tight. Now that is a surgical knot and then you can clip it. So it's not ever going to move on you because you went through twice and that anchors that knot. And we have videos of this. Yes, in our stitches. So we have a library of stitches on our YouTube channel. Look there for any of the stitches that you may need to do. And we, will, we went through them step by step. And we will add them as we use them and want to promote them. All right, so um, I guess I can maybe, there is really no points on here. But what I could do is maybe this end here. So you see how this piece kind of is kind of a rounded corner. Watch what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna go here, and then I'm kind of gonna go in that same hole, and I'm gonna pivot around that corner. And that's what you do on a point as well. So one went that way, one went to the corner, and one went straight. So that's how you do severe points as well as rounded ones. So in the same one again, and then I'm kind of coming out that angle there, and then in the hole, and out this way. So I pivoted three times on that side and three times on that side. And that makes a nice curve and it won't roll up on it because we've secured it down with tension. And that's just how you just com continue to stitch. Now when you are finished and you come all the way around, right here, hopefully you can get this nice and close. 
right here when I'm coming down and I'm stitching and meeting up with my beginning right in that corner of that 90 degree is where you're going to end and then go to the back side and do your knots on the back side so that's a nice little ending point that's why I always go straight down when I start I don't start with just a top I start straight down with a straight line so hopefully that will help you with your blanket stitching if you're new to that so you would continue doing that for all your three ho ho hoes okay and you know so, another good resource too not only the videos are your book and i find the yeah. pictures in those that's yes. what i refer to all the time because they're all close up very detailed as to how to do the stitches i think i think it's mm -hmm. really great so yeah so if you didn't hear what carrie said is i have two books with martingale and uh or for on wool applique and one is a how-to book that shows tons and tons of pictures step by step on what we just did so you can every time the noodle noodle <laughs> I had noodles for lunch every time the needle moves it shows you a new picture or something that happened it shows every time so that was really fun to do that detail it's not just a hey do the blanket stitch here's your photo it was um uh, very detailed of every stitch. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this covered zipper. So so look at you can even put a gray zipper in your pillow when you don't have a red one at home when you're stitching at night to complete your project and and you don't see it because it's covered. So I like to use pillow forms like I said and then I use this hidden zipper type finish and I'm going to show you briefly how to do that. You want me to put this back up? Yep. Okay. So you can see it. There you go. And uh, they can find the kits under new Live with Lisa featured products. Okay. So. New Live with Lisa on, on featured product. All right. Here's my They zipper. will be linked to after the video is aired. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And remember the download is going to be in my blog. Okay. So here's my backing for my pillow. Now I don't want that zipper smack dab in the middle, right? I want it near an end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip, rip again, and this is where my zipper is going to go, not in the middle. All right, so now I have to get these two prepared. So the first one, and of course it has to be just a little bit bigger than my pressing mat here. <laughs> I'm going to give it a quick little press to get the little wrinkle from ripping. And do you see how, do you see how this ripped different? See how, I just want to show you that. So this is about all about straight of grain. So I didn't rip this. This was just a yard. So do you see how, look at the difference. But luckily this will all work out here and we'll get that, we'll get that figured out. All right. So I am going to do this side though just to make sure my pillow is big enough. And don't worry, your kits will all be ripped. They will not be cut. So on the first part, on one side, you're gonna fold over about a half inch. If it's a little bit bigger, it's okay. Mine's probably about three quarters. Then you're gonna take the second one and you're gonna fold that one over in two one inches. I'm going to fold it over one inch. And then one more. Tuck that in there. Set that one aside. Now, here's my zipper. Now the first one, I am going to show you something else here. So here are, here is the zipper foot that came with my machine. And this zipper foot, you have to move. So it slides depending on what side of the zipper you are on. And I do do a tutorial on this one 
on my blog as well. So look for a hidden zipper tutorial and it's just photos and explanations on how to use this one. But Juki has come out with this new one here that I do not have to move. It's so super skinny that it can sew on any side of the zipper. So I want to show you that as well. So that's why I don't have it on my machine is because I wanted to show it to you off the machine. All right, where's my key to take off my foot? Carrie, you want to grab one from my other machine? All right, let's pick the last winner. And then maybe at the end, we'll give away one of these kits too. So we'll give away five presents today. All right, the winner of the, what's left? Charm pack. Charm pack. Thank you. Karen Bennett, you won the Urban Farmhouse 2 charm pack. Put that on her charm. So this is the little key that helps take my feet on and off. It's kind of hard to do it without that, so. I have red thread in my machine, so if you're looking for it, 2460 is a nice Aurifil thread color that will match this flannel. 2460. Tighten that on there. All right. Put the key in my magnet. Clean up my area. Put this away. Put that away. Thread away. You all know how this is, right? Constant. It's a constant battle to always be picking up and cleaning up after yourself. Okay. So no pins. I'm not a pinner when it comes to zippers. So all I'm going to do is place this. So here's the half inch fold that goes wrong side down to the right side of the zipper. So I'm going to make sure you get a good shot of this. I don't think you're threaded, are you? I'm what? No, oh, I didn't see thread. Sorry. It's threaded. Yep. Okay. <laughs> if not, we'll soon know. <laughs> All right, so then I'm just going to stitch this on. Yep, yep we're sewing. <laughs> She's like, how did you do that? Take, change the foot without unthreading the needle. <laughs> and I am about just a smidge under two for my stitch length. I can't sew fast here. I vibrate something on the table. <laughs> and your pillow is only 20 inches, so this is this backing is generous. So don't freak out if it didn't if it's bigger than the zipper. Sure. Now it did it. You jinxed me. I was gonna say I knew there was something wrong. Always when you're live, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get this figured out. What did I do? Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, I wore my flannel shirt today, so I'm hot. And it's really super warm here right now for December. It's like 50 degrees. Oh, let's see if my um, threader works. That was for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's Carrie's moved here from Florida, so we're trying to acclimate her slowly. <laughs> oh, dang, it worked before. So you are sewing on a, a Juki Platinum, which they don't have any more of these, yeah. but we do have the 20 You sure they don't have any more? Yes, I bet. You did? Yep. All right, let's try this again. I do this 50 times without an audience, but the long time I do it with an audience. Okay. All right, we're going. I know I didn't check the bobbin, so hopefully that wasn't the issue. All right. 
right, so there that is. And it looks a little wonky like that. Yep, that'll all flatten out in the end. So now I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to open it up so it's only open one fold. So let's cut this off here, a little piece hanging on there. So I'm going to go right sides together. I'm going to open it up. So here's one fold, one fold down, that's what we want. And we're going to line it up with the other side here. So we're just going to do this. And now I'm just going to run along my foot along this zipper. If, if you're going to do this, you might want to change your needle, because that's what I just did. I just broke my thread again, didn't I? Yeah, I probably have my 70 needle in here, and that's why I'm probably going through way too many layers. Because I broke in the same spot again. Alright. So I probably should have put in a little bit bigger needle, because I sew with a 70 for my patchwork. And that's what I have in here. So just bear with me. I only have a couple more seams and hopefully this won't do this again. But I would at least have an 80 in here to stitch with. All right, let's try this now. I'm gonna pop that up a little bit bigger. realized my fingernail polish matches. I'm sure that wasn't planned. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> it is Christmas time. That's why we went with red. Okay, so now this is what I have. So I need to back this up a little bit like that. And now I'm going to top stitch that. And I might put a couple pins in here. My magic pins just so, so I don't pull it too. Do you want to do that again, show them, show them what happened? With what? You laid it over. Oh, okay, sorry, did I do that too fast? Yep. Okay, so here it is, right? Yep. So it's sewed on. Now I, this fold just covers the zipper. Right. So now I'm gonna top stitch here, and then I'm gonna top stitch these ends. Mm -hmm. But first I'm gonna top stitch this long seam. And I just heard something <laughs> turn off. <laughs> Just We're saying. We're good. We're good? Yeah. I mean, okay. it's off, but... Okay. All right, so now I'm going to put these in. Just to hold this down, and I'll yank them out as I'm sewing. I don't do this at home, though. I just don't want it to bunch up on me here. All right. So now if I was stitching with my other foot, I'd have to move that depending on which side of the zipper that I am moving to. But not with this new cute little foot. I'm good to go. And I just have it nested up against the teeth of that zipper. Is it quarter inch top stitches? Say that again? Quarter inch top stitch? Quarter inch top stitch? Yeah. No. It's just a. You just run it along, I'll show you. Okay. So you're just top stitching and you're running along the zipper. Okay. So that's not really like a quarter of an inch thing going on here, so. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull back my zipper because 
you all know why we need a place to turn it right and I I'm not always the best at this but I try to keep those nice and close together I am going to stitch over the top of it but don't freak out if they don't stay exactly perfectly together it's okay like I said some of that you're going to cut off anyways so I pulled it out too fast and unthreaded my machine again. I'm going to get really good at this. So do we have any questions at all? Mm. Nothing? Nope, not really. Nothing? So how many of you do this already? And how many of you never put a zipper in and you're deathly afraid of it like I used to be? I just need two little things here to go over the top of my zipper, hold it in place so it doesn't move on me. And yes, I'm stitching right over the teeth. They're plastic. It's okay. And then on this side, making sure I have them nice and close together. So now what we're going to do is give it a nice little press and then right here is my zipper pull so I'm going to try not to press that too hard right there. Okay so now here is my zipper. It's hidden and then you would go right sides together and then where's the other one there? Once this is done, like once you're done sewing this, you lay these both right sides together and you trim them to the same size, like so. And then what I do is I sew the long sides first and then I sew the sides. And you can do your walking foot with that or you can just use your regular foot, but you wouldn't use your zipper foot to do that. You would change to do that. And and I also like to round off my corners sometimes. And if you have a circle template that just draw a line like a half inch in a curve from your circle template so you can make that transition really nice. But remember you have, you can't just put it right on the corner. You have to bump it in for it to allow for your seam allowances. And then once this is all flat, trimmed, pinned, sewn, you would just flip it in and put in your pillow form. And we do have pillow forms that are nice for this size. They are 18 by 30. And I know this pillow is like 15 by 29-ish. And it fits wonderfully in there. It's not like snug as could be, but I think it still looks good. All right, so any other questions on the zipper or the wool applique or anything like that? We will, um, okay, so Christine Stevens, you win the Ho 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 kit, and they are $22 on our website. So that's a nice little, little gift for somebody, for one of your stitching friends too, or like I said, to make for somebody without having too much um, money involved, just a little sweat equity of sewing. Okay, so I think... That might be it for today, unless we have any other questions. Are you good, Jessica? Yeah. All right. Okay, everyone, go to my blog post. Give me about five, 10 minutes. Let me get it posted. Print out your pattern. And if you need to, go to our website, order some red flannel. And what is the zipper in there too or not? It is not. Okay, so, but we do have zippers if you want a zipper. And uh, they're like two bucks or something like that, or two fifty. So look for those and get yourself a quick little ho 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 pillow stitched up. All right, take care, everyone. Bye now.